right, so after 15 years in Rivert, Wyoming, we are at the city limits and on our way on the next uh, step. So it's uh, 11.30 in the morning, kind of later than where we were anticipating to leave. But saying goodbyes, had a wonderful time and breakfast with Dan Weeks that surprised us with the map years of travels he has done uh, he used to drive over the road truck just an adventurer in his own right uh, so he, uh, he presented us with the map where he highlighted some of the some of the roads that he's taken over the years and uh, recommendations for our trip. I marked in yellow the, the good roads. The, the roads that you have taken? That, that would be good for you to do. Uh -huh. right. they're, all, they're all good roads, but I, but I didn't do any interstates and I didn't do any big U.S. highways. These are all uh -huh, back state uh -huh. roads and I also put down um, off-road roads. There's right. quite a few off-road roads. So I don't know where you're going. Tell me stopped by quickly and uh, said said goodbye to Raymond's. I uh, didn't get that on the camera, but uh, Mitch had known the family for many, many years. Grew up with Jake, his best friend. Uh, I've got, gotten to know the family, one just wonderful people. But uh, at this point, it's all closing that chapter in our life. Uh, obviously, we'll try to keep in touch with everybody. And, left the open invitation to come and visit us but it's a beautiful morning and we are on the way so first step is going to be or first first stop butte montana where i'm scheduled to meet this afternoon with a, a buddy of mine that i uh, i was deployed in iraq with and uh, from then we really have opened door any suggestions so if anybody, uh, whoever is watching this video uh, in the states that we're going to be covering in the next couple of weeks, and that is uh, Idaho, uh, Washington, Oregon, and California, somebody who is interested uh, to uh, maybe uh, get together and uh, show us around beautiful places go ahead and uh, uh, send the PM to YouTube and we'll get back to you otherwise we'll be just looking at the map and whatever is going to look attractive that's where we are planning to head towards I guess that's good enough so here is the Wind River of the Wind River Indian Reservation the river winds through this Wind River Canyon in its turn, which is just a beautiful road. On the other side of the canyon, there's a town of Thermopolis. It's known for its hot springs. But the interesting fact is that while it winds through the canyon, it's called the Wind River. At Thermopolis, outside the Wind River Reservation boundary, the river is called Bighorn. Same river, two different names. A couple of nice tunnels coming up. Not sure when they were built. But on the other side, across the river, on the other side of the canyon, there is a railroad. And of course, the years that we have a lot of precipitation quite often there's the road closures due to mudslides or rocks rolling down on the road and things like that I used to love taking the motorcycle through the, this canyon yeah i remember that trip with mike mm -hmm. actually we've taken two trips once to cody oh uh, no the beaver a bear. No, uh, Red Lodge, bear Montana. Claw. Bear Claw Pass. Yeah, to Red Lodge, Montana. To Red Lodge, right. And, and the then, second one, we went to tents, sleep. That's when I yeah to uh, wiped out and crashed my motorcycle. What is it? 
to a Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, through a ten slip canyon. Another beautiful canyon. I remember a couple of years ago, one of the boulders did it derail the train or it just got on the on the railroad track and they had to close the the railroad for a few days I think. I don't remember. I think if I'm not mistaken back the, the boulder that rolled down actually hit the, the train itself. I mean the freight train so that anybody was injured. Mm -hmm. I'm Italian, in this turns, I can feel that the cruiser is top hat. I mean, it's not leaning dramatic or anything, especially with the air in those uh, air springs. But it's still, uh, it feels different than when it's empty, especially without all that weight on the top. You'd think, you know, tent and sleeping bags and things like that shouldn't have much of an effect, but I actually can, I can actually feel it. Well, we got chainsaws and all the camping gear too. Right, but well, most of the weight we put in a cab. There, yeah, you're right. There's still James was telling me that this canyon and I believe one mountain range in Montana is one of the few places other than Alaska that you can see the northern lights in. Really? He had the, the chance to actually be driving through the canyon and see it falling down huh. through. Says so you can you can hear it going through the sky. Driver switch and on to Montana. Here's Thermopolis welcomes you. I always kind of like this town. Nothing special about it, it's just nice and quiet. I guess typical western town. So here's the hot springs. Of course, all those uh, plateaus were built up. It's all the minerals from the spring. All right, we covered our first 100 kilometers. I don't know, maybe uh, I'm getting old and sentimental, but uh, all the trips that we have taken, Mitch, I know it's kind of really weird for me to think that this, I mean, I'm excited about the trip, but the fact that we're not coming back, that's, <laughs> that's kind of giving me a little, gives me a little, uh, I don't know what what to call it. Well, I kind of kept it together for most of the part, but I teared up a little bit saying bye to the Rangers. Did you? Yeah. Huh. Well, you're not even old and uh, sentimental yet. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. Uh, it is kind of. I don't know. I, I guess I'm not very skillful to express myself about things like that, but. There is something. I don't know, I did, never felt that way after all the places that I lived for extended time. Florida, Italy, and of course, back in Russia, or the USSR. Um, maybe I was younger, maybe I uh, never developed that kind of attachments. But Wyoming will always be special in my heart. In my heart, Mitch. Typical Wyoming scenery, high plains with the mountains on the background. That's a Bighorn Mountain Range. 
up ahead. Well, we, we don't have to cross over it, we're gonna we'll be staying west of it, making our way north to Montana. So Mitch, how long do you think it's going to take us before we're sick and tired of each other? Or are you already? <laughs> I think uh, I think I should be fine, but you young and, and temperate or intemperate, so you might get annoyed. It, it dep depends on uh, on my behavior. I guess we'll have to wait and see. All right, town of Worland. As most of Wyoming towns, probably a few thousand people, at the most six, maybe seven. Worland is, what about, I would say, well actually 130 kilometers north of Raritan, Wyoming. But this is mostly farming, unless, unlike most of the Wyoming that is ranching community, Worland has a lot of uh, farms grow, growing everything from wheat to oats, uh, even some corn, even though it's not the best part of the country for corn. Here's a due to some of the original people that inhabited this land. But Mitch and I has always wondered, Wyoming is a really tough, tough part of the United States. It's uh, December and January, the coldest months. It's not unusual to be 20 and sometimes even 30 uh, degrees below. So we often we were wondering, the pioneers that settled out here, I mean, before all the technology, must have been really, well, it took a special breed, really, half people and of course looking around nowadays kind of makes you wonder what the hell happened to their to the prog well, progeny of those people not too many are left the tough a lot of whiners nowadays pretty amazing We're just getting on the other side of small little Oh, on the top of the plateau from from the valley and there is a double of man of snow literally uh, less than a mile just getting up in the plateau Out of 50 states, uh, it has 
just over half a million people. Territory-wise, it is 10th in the Union. So it's a pretty large state, sparsely populated. Montana, Montana is uh, fourth in the territory ranking. Wise, I'm not sure where it is uh, ranked in population, but territory wise, like I said, it's fourth and it has just over a million people, a million two hundred thousand. So, both are fairly uh, open spaces, as I can see, it can be seen on the screen. Now, one thing can be said there's just a little bit more traffic already. Some of the states that will be um, going through on our journey. So for now, it's a beautiful drive, decent road, and we are covering some distance. All right, so far so good. We got into the mountains. Uh, Jeep, I mean uh, Toyota is. Toyota is keeping steady 70 miles per hour with all the weight. Before leaving, we actually uh, got this big on the uh, scale, and it was at uh, 76.60 loaded. And of course, all that extra air resistance with everything on the top of the roof, roof rack. Temperature is normal so far. Covered uh, 425 kilometers, and our fuel consumption. Well, let me switch this gadget to US parameters. So we've been four hours and 53 uh, 53 minutes on the road. Covered 265 miles, uh, getting 11.4 miles per gallon on the average. Which, all things considering the elevation, the temperature, and the speed, and like I said, all the weight and uh, air resistance, it's pretty decent as far as I'm concerned. So. Yeah, uh, deep into Montana we're about, let's see, about 2 hours and 50 minutes away from Butte, Montana, that's where we're heading tonight. Uh, the day is winding down, not sure if I'm going to record it again for this day, but this is day one, and so far both of us spirits yeah so anyway beautiful beautiful scenery beautiful winter afternoon 